Well, what's going on, Print Fam? It's your boy Cam, and we're back in Phoenix. Welcome to the Print Life. Let's roll the intro. Oh, man. Whew. We made it through last week. We did three different events. We had three different gigs in uh, two different cities. We made it. I mean, it was emotionally taxing. It was physically taxing. But it's done. And I learned a lot. I got comfortable with a lot. I got comfortable with pushing like the deadlines and how fast we could pull something together. In other news, we had a while we were gone, we had maybe six jobs get kind of posted just, you know, through the website and stuff. So we're not overbooked, but we'll be able to hopefully get caught up over the course of this week and it'll be business as usual until the next event comes along. I haven't even checked emails yet, but hopefully there's more people requesting um, more gigs in more locations more often. Another thing that I have to do this week is I have to do a redesign of the press. It's The press works okay, but there are definitely some issues with it that need to be addressed in version two. You're looking adorable as always. It's pretty much your favorite squeaky. Yes, get it babes. Get it. Look at that balance. Epic balance. That's the kind of balance that people would... Oh, look at her. Look at her go. Like a circus freak. Go get it, G. I want a great print shop. I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is because I want to tell you kind of where I'm planning to go with this so that you guys have expectations on where this channel is going to go over the course of the next couple of years. Now, when I started this channel, I had the complete intention of documenting going from ultimately what was a small manual shop to an automated shop. I got some advice, some sage advice, and it kind of redirected me. And it almost helped, I think, it, I think that that advice stopped me from making a very big mistake. I have two things going on. First off, I have to get the, version, the second version of that software launched and installed on my website so that I can continue to build the infrastructure and become more efficient in this business. As soon as it's launched, there's going to be like a testing period, probably about three months, and you guys are going to help with that. We work out all the bugs. Any new system is always riddled with bugs. You have to get them worked out. But once that happens and the software is running smoothly, that is my, my next stage of the plan. And what I would like to ultimately do once the the software is good and it's it's capable of managing the shop that I want to build then I I'm able to I'm gonna be able to focus on um, well a couple of things first off building the live screen printing business which I, I'm just really passionate about it and I love doing it it's a lot of fun for me right now and then also building this shop and what I want to do with this shop is something different I want to truly make it a print studio I would like to have a few presses available for other people in the, in the area to rent. And I think that would be a really fun environment to create. Um, I want this shop to specialize in special effect printing, high densities, foils, uh, of course discharges, puffs, the whole, the whole shebang, all that good stuff, glitters, whatever. On top of that, I would like us to have more access to promotional products and I want all of that to be built into the shop management system, but I want to make it easy for a potential client to get everything they need here a one-stop shop so that's going to be the goal starting in the first part of 2019 will be to start building out that kind of infrastructure also 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 i gotta bring embroidery in house i love embroidery it's the most beautiful thing in the world and it needs to be here uh, i just finished editing the the video from the event on Friday in Orlando and I'm uploading that right now dude I fell way behind those live events they're fun but they are they are emotionally draining There's so much that can go wrong it will it'll wear you out man go. check this out this came from my boys at a uh, homegrown Hawaiian this is a badass shirt dude a lime green discharge on a like a Kelly green tee they got the sleeve label on there and everything bro this is fucking dope i think this is on an all style tee shout out to homegrown hawaiian dude this tee is dope as fuck it's 1001 i gotta open this bad boy huh oh god gotta deal with all this shit all right 
this fucking thing is way bigger than I like expected. This is a 50 watt LED. I'm pretty certain that this glass blocks some of the UV output, so I'll probably remove this. I may even remove the guts from this and just put this wafer in the uh, shield over there. But anyway, I'm going to test this out today. This is some sealer for around the uh, the actual vacuum blanket. I just wanted to, because that shit that's on mine is old and cracked and there's gaps. So I'm going to replace it with this stuff. If this works and I can get, and I can just plug it in and it works and it puts out the right amount of UV, then I will be uh, implementing a timer into this and I'll be actually retrofitting that old bastard by making it new again. For me, the first step is just to, before I start tearing this thing apart and all that shit, is to just lay the light inside here. I don't know, get some, some way to push the plug out through here, somewhere around here, uh, and then just sit the lamp inside there, plug it in, you know, plug it into an outlet, put a screen on it, and then just see what if it has enough output. Dude, if it even cuts, because right now we exposed it about three minutes. If we can get it down to one minute or less, that would be fucking epic. First things first, I gotta clear all this crap out of here. So I first thing I'm gonna do is just yank this glass off of here. Ooh. All right, so this will just sit in here for now. Drill. I'm literally just taking this and sitting it right on top of the thing. Now I do need to punch a hole through here. Ooh. Through there. Next test is just to see how long exposures take. So this is the actual exposure unit. So I'm gonna plug that in and I'm gonna get the blower going. Get the vacuum stuck in. There we go. Now we're vacuumed down. This is the light. I'm gonna plug the light in. Yeah. There we go. And it is on. I can see the black light in there. See that? I'm gonna start it at, I'm just gonna see what happens at uh, 30 seconds, huh? Let's see. That was technically 40 seconds. I don't, I can't imagine. all the little details they held up took me maybe 15 20 seconds to wash it out I'm gonna keep hitting it with water and see how long it takes for it to break down It'll be an interesting test Wow I mean I don't know but like seriously wow oh by the way these lights are out I, I didn't time that, maybe another 20 seconds. I'm pretty much just directing the gun at the, like one little area of the screen and it didn't wash out. So my conclusion is that this 50 watt LED lamp penetrates faster, more effectively through the entirety of the emulsion from the back to the, to the front at only 30 fucking seconds. That's more than half the time it was taking us with the old, I think that was a halogen, yeah, like with the halogen lamp. That is extremely fast. And that washed out so well, I bet you I can cut the time down to even 20 seconds. I'm gonna do a couple more tests and see just how short it takes, like how little time it takes. Who wants to try 15 seconds? Should we try 15 seconds? Let's try 15 seconds. For good measure. This is an interesting thing. So, matter of fact, 30 seconds, 40 seconds is actually too long. It somehow was able to penetrate 
through the blocked out parts of the image uh, and kind of expose them just slightly. Whereas at 15 seconds, this thing's washing out easier than it did at 40. So now I'm gonna continue the test and see how long I can spray on it until um, it washes out. Now I do need to say that this is a 200 S mesh screen uh, that has been restretched. It's been used quite a few times. Uh, I don't know if it would have the same results on a 150, so we're going to try that next. But first, let's let's do this. We have tape on our glass, uh, you know, that holds these pre-registration marks down, and I can see a little bit of breakdown where the tape tape is. So that adds enough blocking. That 15 seconds might be a little short. Might step it up to 20, but nonetheless, this is a complete game changer for us. I don't really know what else to say other than the fact that this is exciting for the shop. Because now, I don't have to buy a new exposure unit. I can retrofit that correctly, get a new blanket on it, get new glass on it. I'm trying to find a timer for an instrument panel that will, you know, that I can wire into that LED light and get it to turn off and on on a timer. I'm having, I don't know what to call it. I don't know. I'm not a fucking LED guy. If you guys know what I would call that on Amazon or on Granger or something, let me know in the comments. This is the kind of shit that I do, guys. I start out with an idea. I'm kind of one of those guys that just like gets an idea and I just start running with it. You know, I don't I don't really make big elaborate plans. I'm just kind of more like a dog with the bone. It is a funny thing about this channel. Cuz when it starts, you're just doing things, right? Like when I first started shooting this, I was just doing things. Uh, and I spent a lot of time on the edit and I had all these really cool ideas and a lot of them I've already kind of tried and I've done them and but what ends up happening is as you start building something it starts to kind of go into this funnel and it kind of goes down this track it's like okay this is only what I'm doing this is all that this channel needs to be but it was never intended to be that this channel was intended to document my journey I happened to be a printer so the title was suiting but it didn't necessarily mean that this channel was only going to be about screen printing. If I want to sit here and talk and complain to the camera for a little while, hey, guess what? I'm going to talk and complain to the camera. I cannot figure out what that timer is called. I've been searching on Amazon, Granger, McMaster Car. I can't figure out what it is. I've seen some, like on the Raynars and even on the MNRs, they use like a touchscreen LCD. Someone's out there. Oh, no, I don't. Uh, the blue door on the outside. Just go out, out, out the garage door here. You'll see there's a blue door to your right. There's a keypad on it. Yeah. Just enter your code in there. They'll let you in. Oh, look at her. She's just such a chunky monkey. You've been sleeping in here all day. I didn't. I didn't get to. <laughs> I didn't get to share this little this little incident that I had when I was screen printing uh, there in Orlando, because I didn't really think about it until right now. So you know you're printing, and when you're doing these events, you, you, there's a lot of people coming through the line, right? There's moms and dads, there's kids by themselves, there's moms with their kids, there's dads with their kids. You see a lot of people, all different types. This one family comes through, it's a mom, it's a mom and dad, and then they have their kid. And the kid, you know, they've all gotten their shirts over with the people that were hosting the booth, right? And they're coming to us to get them printed. And the dad, he, he loads his shit up and he gets, he's like, oh yeah, I want this on the front. And we go, okay, cool. And the mom goes, oh, I want this on the front. And the kid's sitting there looking at it and he's thinking, right? He's kind of like, not really chubby, but he's just a little heavy set. He's a little thicker in the gut, kind of got a big head, kind of short, right? Probably short for his age. <laughs> but he's sitting there looking, and the dad's like, hey, man, you know, there's a line building. And the dad goes, hey, which, which, which graphic do you want? And, I'm, and I ask him for I go, hey, so, okay, so you got number one, two, or three. Which one do you want? And the kid's goes, oh, I don't know. No, no, no. He's like, he's looking at the shirt. He's taking a long time, right? It's taking a little longer than... It probably should have taken him, but it's no big deal. And, and he's like, ah, oh, yeah. And then the dad goes, hey, hey, what, <laughs> what do you want, right? A little, little stern. And the kid's like, ah, I don't. <laughs> he goes, I don't know. And then the dad waits a little second longer. You know, he's kind of sitting here, tapping his foot. And finally, he goes, hey. And the whole line hears the dad. And he goes, looks at the kid. And he goes, what do you want? Which one do you want? You got to make a decision. And the kid looks up, like the kid, you know, looks up. He's all, uh, uh, <laughs> he's all, I don't know. And the dad goes, the dad goes, just, just print number two for him on the front. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm all, okay, okay. And it's really awkward. Everyone's looking at the dad, right? The dad clearly lost his patience with the kid. The kid's like, you know, looking at me and me, not really embarrassed. <laughs> 
And then 30 seconds pass. I go, okay, I, I, I go, is that cool with you if you want number two? And the kid goes, yeah, yeah. And he kind of silently, <laughs> not really silently, he steps over <laughs> to his mom. And, goes, and this, is, this is a kid. He might be eight. He might be eight. He's small for his age, a little chubby. Uh, and he goes, <laughs> he looks at his mom, and he kind of raises his shoulders like this, and he goes, how am I supposed to make a decision? With <laughs> he goes, sorry. How am I supposed to make a decision with all that pressure? <laughs> how am I supposed to make a decision with all that pressure? <laughs> Is it? I mean, listen, it's been the only person to make me laugh that hard is my girlfriend, Jen. Like, maybe other than that, I have not laughed that hard. So I'm sitting there printing, you know, you know, that, un that uncontrollable giggle that you get, like, say, in church, when you just heard the funniest or somebody did the funniest thing and you're not allowed to laugh. I had that kind of giggle. It was from that kid. One more time, he looks at his mom, frustrated, raises his shoulders. How am I supposed to make a decision <laughs> with all that pressure? <laughs>